Let's go. And I'm back, baby. Back in my say. way to watch Tonga versus Springboks. I've got an extra ticket which I paid 176 euros for. I'm still trying to sell it and I'm on the way to the stadium now so don't know if it's gonna happen but I really hope because it's quite a lot of money of course. Anyways uh, Springboks should comfortably win. Um, I'll probably say my 30 points. I don't know what my official prediction was in Super Brew but uh, should be at least 30 points. South Africa have to get the bonus points, so they should be switched on. Let's see. Tries at the second uh, try of the whole World Cup, um, but yeah, they uh, they definitely have, aren't taking Tonga lightly. Um, so let's see what happens in the second half. Okay, I hope we don't jinx him, but he's kicked all his kicks over so far. <coughs> Polly put the kettle on.
23 seconds. Epa! Clean, clean, baby. Okay, let's check the uh, money. We we'll stick one from one. Uh, it's from the other comics. So we can stick. This one is exactly the same price as Paula did earlier. You mean it's actually cost it good? Set the mix. Set the mix. Okay, since we've got the opportunity, why don't we do some analysis and comparison? And as the French guy said to us after the match, in French, Polar is the wife of the chicken. <laughs> Anyways, you'll see it comes in cool, calm, and collected, just hits it with just as much power as he needs. No fills, no fuss, no easy and over. You'll see now Monty Lubbock, he comes in with a lot more pace and power, and it does whack the ball, which uh, probably makes it more difficult to control the accuracy of the kick. Okay, let's quickly go to a split comparison so we can compare how long each kicker takes uh, to strike the ball. So keep an eye on the shot clock on the right. Um, Pollard is on the left and he's going to be kicking first. He'll kick around 21 seconds and then we check when Monty Lubbock does his kick. There you see at 21 seconds Pollard kicks and Monty is still busy with his uh, pre-kick routine. And you'll see it's at about, yeah, let's call it 8 seconds, so that's 13 seconds difference. So Mani does a lot more, um, I call it boogieing before he strikes the ball. And uh, I think if you can cut down that, he's just going to put a lot less pressure on himself. One of the reasons I love rugby. But uh, most teams are making a circle now. Our family is out here. All the kids. So this was a photo we took uh, right at the end of the night um, in the middle of my friend Steph and next to me is Andre. Uh, it was great uh, being there with him and we had a, we had a great time and even Sari Mare got into the conversation somewhere along the line. Yeah, after this I basically walked for probably an hour back to my accommodation, took a shower quickly, slept for half an hour, got on a bus, then on a plane and then I drove, then I drove home and Oh, that was an integrated weekend. So I just want to say something about Tonga. Tonga is a country with just over 100,000 people and it's amazing how competitive they've been in rugby. And they've qualified for all the World Cups except one. Uh, the only one they didn't qualify for was 1991. They've also beaten um, quite a few tier one nations, so the big countries uh, that have also a lot of finances, of course. So they've beaten France one, um, twice, I think, and they, uh, yeah, they beat them once at the 2011 World Cup. 
Um, they, they've beaten Scotland, they've beat Italy uh, twice as well, they've beaten Australia, that was uh, further back, that was 1973, and came very close to beating South Africa at the 2007 World Cup. Um, the sad thing is, is that uh, this country obviously very small, it's got a very small economy, so a lot of their players or of Tongan and Set are playing for other countries where they, yeah, basically they got a better shot of, of uh, playing in a big tournament or doing well at a big tournament and also obviously financial side. And um, the other thing is that the Pacific Island nation specifically, and a lot of a lot of what's called tier two tier two nations. I think they're trying to drop that term, but um, these teams have not been afforded a lot of first of all matches uh, in a calendar cycle, and also not against tier one nations. So it's very difficult for them to progress because you need to be tested and. Countries like Tonga, for example, they have the athletes, they have the players, they just need to play more matches and they do need some financial support. And um, that's so integral to rugby that we have to find a way to really um, let them let them live up to their potential. Can it be better for the game of rugby? It's going to grow the game and uh, the, the game needs to be more competitive for it to grow. All right, so I'm just quickly going to show you what I mean, and then we'll just have a look at, uh, to check how many matches they've played. I'm going to compare, uh, since I was talking to Africa, I'm just going to compare the matches that they've played in the, in the last four years, so between the, the World Cups, and then we can see uh, how big the difference is there. So I'm just taking this with Google. Um, we'll just go back over here. This, so over here is the last World Cup. I'm going to include the cancelled matches, okay? So let's, let's count them as well. All right, so we're starting here in November um, 2020. So let's just count to two. So that's two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So they've played 19 matches uh, in between the World Cups. Okay, let's have a look at South Africa now. The last, uh, in the last World Cup, the last match of Pros in the final, of course. Uh, beautiful win there for South Africa. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to count all the things that were that, that were also cancelled. Obviously, there was growing in this period, but um, let's have a look. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 21, 23, 25, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So that's 40 matches they've played in that same time. So that's one of the things where you can see there's a very big difference about why South Africa would be uh, doing better than Tonga. And uh, I definitely think if Tonga would get more matches, many people say this, they would be more competitive because they already have the athletes.